There you are, welcome back. What's not shown on my desk is the Snapmaker Artisan, a three-in-one digital fabrication machine capable of 3D printing, CNC milling, and to complete the trifecta, laser engraving and cutting. You first saw this machine when I visited the Snapmaker booth at CES, and now it's here. Okay. Where is the machine? It's not here. It's right over there. It's over there because it's ginormous. It's fantastically huge. It would look ridiculous on this desk, which is where I built it. Filmed on my GoPro and built over the course of two hot and sweaty nights. I did get the motion system together first. And on the second sweaty night, I was able to assemble the enclosure. Once done with the assembly, I was honestly quite proud of myself for getting it together. And then my pride turned to sadness because I realized that I had built this monument atop a temporary mountain. It's big! Never deterred, I was able to take apart some wires and move the machine over to that big table over there, and that is its forever home. All right, let's talk specs, because it is a three-in-one machine, and that three-in-one functionality happens within a 400 millimeter cubed work area, and that is supported by a seven-inch touchscreen that controls it all. The three different tool heads slide into place and then a lever secures them. The three different work surfaces slot into place and then a lever secures them as well. Levers are cool. The machine is three in one and the first of the three that I want to talk about is 3D printing. Of course, this is the work surface for 3D printing, otherwise known as the print bed and it does have a 400 by 400 outer zone. But take a look at the inside. That line denotes an inner zone of 260 by 260. So it's a two zone heated build plate. And with Snapmaker, it's 110 C it can get to in the 260 by 260 zone. Outside of that, the larger zone can get up to 80 C. What's kind of cool though, their slicing software, Luban, when slicing a model, if it fits within that 260 by 260 millimeter center area, it just won't heat the external area, saving you a few pennies. The print bed has also got a little feature to it. It's double-sided, so these clips hold it in and these pressure clips back here. This side is textured PEI that you get to print on. Let's say you want yourself a smooth, glassy finish. That's where the other side comes in handy. <laughs> there we go. So now it's shiny. So this is then the smooth glass surface. So when 3D printing, you have both options. The 3D printing tool head is dual extrusion. And there they are right there. Each one of these is going to get to 300 C and each one of these can raise out of the way of the other. So if this is the active tool head, this one will raise up just a little bit out of the way so it's always the one closest to the printing surface. Each one of these is 0.4 millimeter brass, but you do have the option of buying 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 brass nozzles or a 0 0.4 millimeter hardened steel nozzles. Another feature that these offer is they are quick release. So you've got the, the heating element, the thermistor, the the cooling, everything right there, and then it just slots right back in. Just like that. Awesome. The test print I did for the 3D printing is this. It is a baby axolotl from Sal 3 d and I adore it. And you might be asking yourself, Joel, why didn't you use dual extrusion? Or Joel, why didn't you take advantage of the 400 millimeter squared build surface? And I was like, nah, I have some ideas for some dual extrusion prints I can try. And uh, frankly, when you have a large machine, it should be able to print large things. But from my experience, what I wanted to do is see if a very large machine could print a very small print. And I think it did a good job. There's a little bit of improper cooling underneath the chin, just a, just a tad. But other than that, this baby axolotl is fantastic and I love it. 
The laser surface is a standard slotted bed and you have these hold downs that you can put in in order to frame the piece of material that you're using the laser on. This is the laser tool head and it sports a 10 watt laser capable of doing some pretty cool stuff. This tool head can engrave at speeds such as 600 millimeters per minute, but it can also cut through woods such as polonia at around eight millimeters thick in a single pass. But obviously, uh, they spec'd it on polonia. If you throw a different type of wood or material in there, the speed at which you can engrave and the thickness in which you can cut in a single pass are gonna be a little bit different. The tool head is using beam splitters and shaping optics to make sure the laser coming down on the material is as precise as possible. Within the laser tool head, there is a camera and a focusing laser. Now, the focusing laser allows you to automatically find the height of the material that you're going to be engraving or cutting. There's also a camera in there. So in Luban software, you can have it take a picture and then it translates what's on here digitally so that you can properly place your artwork and have it cut or engrave in the right spot. You may be asking yourself, Joel, what did you laser? Well, I'm not as versed within laser cutting and laser etching. I have limited experience in that, but I'm hoping to get more because it's an exciting part of digital fabrication that I really, really want to learn. And so what I did was laser myself a Joel bot. So I had it here and this was up above and it went pew, 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 pew. And it made that Joel bot. But I mean, look at that. That looks good. That is a fantastic etch. I think it's basswood that that is. They did have an example model that had some more detail, but I was like, I really, I really, really wanted this. And so I made this and I'm really happy I did because it makes me smile. Last and certainly not least is the CNC milling and CNC cutting parts of the three in one. And unfortunately I don't have it right here because it's on the machine. So let me take it to the machine and let's go take a look at the CNC function. Here we are at the machine. You can see that I, I just got done with a job. Let's open the door. That is a 200 watt spindle and it can achieve an accuracy of 0.2 millimeters. Now this enclosure is gonna help keep the dust in here and not out here. The walls are acrylic, which means it's gonna have a little bit of static clean. There's also no air assist on this, which means the sawdust is just gonna build up on the piece. But hey, let's grab a vacuum and let's clean this up and then let's go take a look at it on the big camera. Well, there we go. Sorry if that vacuum was a little loud. So this is the 200 watt spindle, like I said, capable of 0.2 millimeter accuracy. Here's the piece. This has these, uh, these nice hold downs here, holding it down. And then it is a, an example piece that Snapmaker <laughs> included. So let's, let's get it off. Let's get it off this and actually see what it is. So with a CNC workflow, you are gonna get little tabs that hold everything in and you can clip them or you can just push things out. One of these days, I'll find out what exactly this is supposed to be. It might even be on screen right here. But I, I did put together this wooden ball and it looks like it has a stand. These, I'm, I'm not quite sure what these do. There we go. I made a mess and I figured it out. It's a little spinny thing. Victory! Well, there we go. That is my first look or my first use of the Snapmaker Artisan 3-in-1. 3D printing, CNC milling, laser engraving and etching. I love that I get to play with each of these things. And in the future, I have this really cool idea for a project that's gonna utilize all three. I don't wanna spoil it, but it should be fun. And it would be something nice. It's just gonna be something nice. I also have a large printer 
project planned with this, and so I'll bring that to you as well. But as far as a first look and a first use of the machine, I'm quite satisfied with it. Uh, I'm excited to do more 3D printing, obviously, but I'm excited now to have a machine that also lets me learn more about CNC milling and cutting, and you know, also lets me learn more about laser engraving and cutting too. That's kind of exciting. So if you have a snap maker, let me know. If you have ideas for CNC milling or laser engraving, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, I'm excited to bring you more about this. If you have specific questions also, maybe leave them down there. I might be able to answer them. Snap maker might be watching this. Maybe they can answer it. I'll put a link in the description where you can find more information about it. But because you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in and three in one all the things. And as always, high five.